We have some new information about the father accused of trying to drown his children. It happened about a week and a half ago in West Haven. Court information shows 41 year old Romney Deronville entered a not guilty plea on all charges he's facing. We also just learned his kids are now out of the hospital after police say he was caught at the beach in the middle of the night with them in the water. He's still behind bars and is due in court at the end of August. We're doing everything we can as a state to take the lead on this, but the rest really is up to you. Right now at 6, crisis in Connecticut. Too many drunk or high drivers killing innocent people out on the roads. And the governor is now calling it an epidemic. Transportation workers demanding respect, facing danger every day. Channel 3's Dylan Fearon spoke to Governor Lamont about this today. He is live in Wallingford tonight with more. Dylan. Well, Mark, Aaron, 165 people have been killed on Connecticut roads this year. It's a shocking statistic, especially considering it's only July 2nd, but it's true. But we're continuing to see people driving distracted on our roads, driving aggressive on our highways, and driving impaired. A friend does not let a friend drive drunk. Governor Lamont faces tough questions on Connecticut's major drinking and driving problem as Shari and Sal Domenico hold hands, bravely standing in front of cameras. Their son Andrew's death rocking Connecticut, killed last week working on I-91. Our hope is for something positive to come out of this tragedy so that no other family has to endure the pain and suffering that our family is feeling this week and forever. The driver, Denise Lucibella, was driving under the influence, according to police. Alex Oyola Sanchez admitted to being high when he hit and killed trooper Aaron Pelletier last month. It's a public health issue. It's a mental health issue. Um, we need to address it that way. As I'm going to be brutally honest. I'm angry. This is too much. I've lost too many co-workers. I've lost too many colleagues, contractors. David Ferraro has worked at Connecticut DOT for 30 years. When he was 26, same age as Andrew, he was hit by a drunk driver on the highway. Luckily, he survived. Treat people out there on the highway as your relatives, your family, your father, your brother, your sister, uh, you know, your aunt. Um, Look at it from that perspective and, and slow down and give us the break we need. The state has more troopers on our highways, speed cameras in work zones, flashing lights and signs to prevent wrong way driving. Nationwide, we have the move over law, but we're still seeing preventable tragedies on our roads. People still drinking or getting high and driving. Now, in the middle of construction season, workers are worried for their lives. The governor says most of the responsibility is on us. I need folks to look out for each other. I need you to say uh, to somebody who's driving a car that shouldn't be driving a car, pull over. I need you to say if somebody's busy texting and not paying attention, stop it. And absolutely repeat offenders. Um, you know, no more slaps on the wrist. People need to be held accountable for their poor action. Now we're at the Fallen Workers Memorial. This sign has the names of the 37 men and women Connecticut DOT employees killed on the job. Unfortunately, Andrew makes 38 in the DOT's 127 year history. Mark and Aaron Andrew's name will be added to this sign very soon. We're live in Wallingford tonight. I'm Dylan Fear in Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Yeah, just